Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another weekly edition of Kubert Community Meeting. Um, this is your chance to talk to your developers and community about uh, anything, uh, GitHub issues, pull requests, um, using Kubert. Um, so um, posting uh, meeting notes into chat. If you could, please enter your attendance. And uh, we usually start the meeting off by uh, giving a few minutes for new people to introduce themselves. So anybody uh, want to say hi? Okay, uh, let's get started then. Daniel, you have the first uh, the first agenda item. Oh, you are your volume is very low. Is it better now? Yes. Much better. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you for the heads up. Um, yeah. I was uh, wanting to talk about uh, that we have good news that finally Kubernetes CI has gotten integration of 1.21 Kubernetes providers. And uh, these have already been merged through the latest Kubernetes CI and the, uh, they are going to land in Kubernetes soon. Um, I've attached the PR where this uh, bump PR which, which uh, integrates the latest Qbert CI to Qbert um, um, is going on. Um, all 1.22 test lanes for all ZIGs have been positive, which is great to see. Um, and yeah, we hope that it will merge today or tomorrow. Great, it sounds like we are very close to testing everything on 1.22, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it finally it, it took a while that that uh, one more than uh, more than one month after uh, uh, release of Kubernetes 1.22, but yeah, I think we're finally there. <laughs> and I apologize for being slow on your C name for the load balancer. Uh, I just got um, ownership rights to Kubert, which have been uh, populated to the CNCF. And now I can have access to their Jira and I can create a, a ticket for them to actually do it. So uh, hopefully I can get that for you today. Oh, great. All right, thank you. Federico, yeah, there you are. Okay, Daniel, you have no, I know number two as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to talk, to talk about is uh, that we are currently working on integrating or bundling CDI with Cupid CI, so you don't have the hassle to install uh, CDI all by yourself. Instead, you can just set a environment variable to true, and then Cupid uh, will, um, after cluster up, it will deploy CDI in the Cupid CI cluster, which in turn, uh, makes us uh, get rid of this uh, manifest in the Qbert code, uh, which uh, has this uh, bundled um, uh, manifest of the CDI. Uh, so we can just uh, update CDI in one place and have uh, everything uh, in one place and get rid finally of the Qbert uh, CDI install installation. Uh, it, you, we have to note uh, that, of course, you can uh, opt out of this and just install any CDI version you want by yourself. But in general, if you set this flag when using Qbert, you should just get a CDI that is up and running. And the yeah. other thing we, which you didn't mention is that it's the images from that CDI version are pre-synced inside the provider, so it also doesn't have to pull anything up. So it should be up very fast and reliable. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I measured, at least on my local system, uh, an install of uh, or a cluster up with uh, CDI enabled was around two and a half minutes, which is, I think, really good. Yeah. 
I've attached uh, both PRs. One of uh, one is the CDI integration into Cupid CI, and the other one is the integration preview into Cupid. If you want to have a look, please have a look at the community meeting notes. Just a general question regarding CDI. How come we don't have a CDI get installed by HCO by default anyway? Could you rephrase? Uh, or um, how come CDI doesn't install um, by HCO by, def by default? Why is it a two-step process? Uh, yeah, so for Kubernetes development, we are not using HCO because HCO is there to install uh, components like Kubert and CDI and so on. So this is a chicken and egg thing. This is really just for Kubernetes development where we're deploying the Kubernetes source code, but also need CDI for testing features where the two work together. Right, but how come we don't do that in production? Why do we have a two-step installation process? So well, everything we are talking about here is just for development or for people which are not using HCO. Right, but I'm, I'm just asking generally, not related to the development environment. So, but HCO is installing both Kubert and CDI. Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought so too, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I could be wrong. I, <laughs> I actually haven't done it in a little while, but dealing with community stuff. <laughs> All right, scratch that, sorry. <laughs> I'm only on a half a cup, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's Roman, go ahead with the, thank you, Daniel. Uh, um, sorry for the, the brain uh, failure there. Um, so let's uh, move on to you. Okay, so um, some of you even in the call probably have tried to to make use of hubert.io slash client go at one point and have probably seen that we have huge issues there with our dependencies which we're pulling in from various other <laughs> And I guess it's the time for us to to work towards a more clean client gen approach where we potentially have our own API packages for components like CDI and Hubert and people would just take these API packages and use them client gen to generate the clients or use a dynamic client. And we stay out of the business of providing a REST client ourselves. Because right now you, it's almost impossible to vendor the client go package in there. Michael, what are your thoughts on that? Michael Linux. Yeah, I agree 100%. Oh, your volume is too high. <laughs> <laughs> I guess one thing to consider here would be, I mean, it's easy for, it would be easy for Kubert to create a Kubert slash API repo, but we probably want more than one API repo for different projects. So we probably have to come up with names and something like this. But yeah. I guess it would make sense if we make progress on that. And then the goal of this would be that we basically almost only depend on core Kubernetes dependencies like kubernetes.io slash API, kubernetes.io slash API machinery. And that's actually pretty much it already. There shouldn't be much more. I'll write a follow-up email on that. Great, thanks Roman. Uh, I just had to deal with uh, our dependencies filling out the CNCF due diligence and notice how many there were. So glad we can clean up that list. Okay, uh, on to open floor. Does anybody have any general thoughts on? Development using Kubert. Anything? Okay. Um, how about we talk about some events then? Uh, has anybody heard from Alicia? I think she has uh, Birds of the Feather this week.
Jersey this morning in the meeting. I'm sorry, Sam. He was here this morning in the uh, meeting. You are really choppy. Can barely understand you. And did we lose Sam? I think we lost him. Dad. Uh, can, you, can you see in the chat? I posted. Okay. Let's see. Ah. Oh, okay. She was there. Uh, hopefully, she had success. I will uh, try and get her on email and uh, see how. Oh, he said uh, everything went good. Great. Uh, yeah, that was uh, KBM Forum, Birds of a Feather. It's just a uh, uh, informal uh, Q and A and introduction to Kubert. And... Okay. And then... yeah. oh, oh, oh. Is that me? <laughs> no, I'm bad. Hello? I think it might it's my turn. <laughs> okay. Sam is definitely having problems with his microphone over there. Oh, no, no, I, I wasn't that going. I had one muted. Oh, okay. You sound much, but whatever you did, you sound much better just then. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just moved to the closer. Okay. So, did you participate with her? Yeah, it was great. We did the demo. Um, there, was, uh, there was no really good news. Uh, but questions, uh, the answers, and I think it was overall successful. Great, glad to hear. Um, and congratulations on your first presentation with Kubert. Thank you. Okay, um, I volunteered uh, David Vossel and myself to talk about Kubert at um kubecon la uh, so we're going to do the same thing we're we're going to uh, do the intro to kubert uh, along with the, the demo uh, it's office hours so again it's uh it's it's informal um the the red hat ospo appreciates our uh, our volunteering for taking on an office hours um, they have nine slots they have to fill, and so they're they're reaching out to uh, all CNCF communities to find find uh, people to fill those slots. And then uh, we have all things open coming up next month. Yeah, I wanted to say and so like Sam and Stu. Stu is not able to make the meeting this morning. Um, I'm really going to be hounding you guys to to get on this one. Yeah, so um, if I can um, say I can have a demo working probably by tomorrow as far as having a local cluster going. Um, if you want me to pair, I can pair with my another site at the location or I can give instructions on another user here as far as how to pair with them. Um, but I did some research with WireGuard, that's the new primary use. I tried to work with Kilo. Uh, Kilo was kind of uh, rocky as far as its uh, configuration. So I'm just going with a uh, WireGuard gateway that just does site to site. Um, and as long as we'll have interfering siders, we should be fine. Okay. And your microphone is starting to act up again. I just had to volume way down. Sorry. Uh, yeah, then super, super, right, that works too. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, why do I have a feeling that I'm missing an event? Um, I 
just have this feeling that there's an event around all things open. Maybe it's, I'm just confusing myself with KubeCon LA. Okay. Um, anybody else have a, anything you want to talk about? Going once, going twice, three times. Okay. Um, do we have any poll requests that uh, anybody would like to talk about? Okay. Uh, I actually have some poll requests that I found over in uh, the Kubert community. Um, we have another uh, a number of design proposals that have been in progress. Um, if, if you guys can take a look at the at these proposals, um, one of them has been in progress since April 29th. We have one from July 6th. Um, let's make sure we get some uh, some attention on these proposals and uh, let me know when. Uh, when we're good for uh, good for merging. And uh, we'll get some communication out to the email list as well. So thank you everyone. Okay, um, let's see, uh, missed, missed uh, this item in the open floor. Just a, a quick note about the CNCF pull request for uh, graduation to incubation. That pull request is located right here. Um, please comment on it if uh, you have anything that you want to add. Uh, okay. This is our process for graduation to incubation. And just a, just a quick update. Um, we have a sponsor. Um, it's going to be Elena from Apple. And she's trying to conven convince uh, Dims from VMware to sponsor us. So yeah, that's great. those are huge wins for us guys. <laughs> Massive companies to uh, uh, that are using Kubert. And uh, hopefully along with that, um, Elena will authorize us for wait for it, wait for it, sticking a big apple right there. <laughs> Wait, is the, the PR already open for our in CNCF people? Did it just yeah, it, the pull request is open. Um, oh, so no. I definitely so no, it's out. It's out of our. It's out of our hands now. Um, this is. They're going to take this document and they're going to have their own uh, discussion with the board, and um, that's something that is. Uh, it's private, but then they uh, they publish a video, and of course they they interface with us um, regarding the results of their discussion. So all the paperwork is done for our, from our standpoint. We just have to wait. Awesome. Um, the TOC uh, has a YouTube channel. And if you want to look at some of their other board meetings, um, you can. Uh, there, uh, there's no code or anything. It's just all paperwork discussion. So if you like watching like C-SPAN, <laughs> That's the YouTube channel for you. <laughs> but I'm I'm really interested in being able to get uh 
get an Apple logo advertised here. I think that would, would be amazing. They, uh, app, as we all know, Apple is very strict with where their logos are, uh, are able to be advertised. So for us to be able to do so is, would be a great thing. Okay. Uh, mailing list. I did a mailing list review. I think we have everything covered. Meeting notes, release, meeting notes, and meeting notes. Uh, we talked about Bert Handler restarts already, so I think we have everything covered. And bug scrub time. Roman. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I think you just have to give up the screen. Yep, there you go. Oh, where is it? Oh, wait, I can. You had your screen for a second there. Well, yeah, I just don't know. It looks different than it did before when it. I just can share a whiteboard. Okay. No. Should there be other options? <laughs> so when it, did you click on share screen? What? No. Oh. Portion of the screen is empty. Can you see my screen now? Uh, yep. Yeah, you're starting. Okay, that's good. It's getting there. Still seeing a black screen over here. Are you on Fedora by any chance? Yeah, Fedora 34. Yeah, oh no. Uh, I think I. It. it worked in 32 without any problems. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think <laughs> they, they introduced a problem with Wayland. Oh. Okay, then I'll stop sharing. Maybe someone can share yeah. this for me, but I'm still happy to... to. Okay, I'll, I'll share and you narrate. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, take I always complain about it, all those people which are not testing their screen sharing before they join the meetings. And mm -hmm. now got me. <laughs> Yeah, David's been having trouble with it for quite some time. Yeah, uh, yeah like I'm, I'm not fond of my Mac, but it works. I don't, I don't fight it. <laughs> I Everybody... tell you one thing: this year will be the desktop year for Linux. <laughs> <laughs> well, I run Android, so. <laughs> so maybe you can share the issues for me, and we we'll just go from there. Yeah. All right. So, how to run a Mac VM? Yeah, we can start there. Um, nope. Yeah, and and I already respond there. And I so the person is trying to run a, a Mac on Qbert, but seems to have issues. I'll add the triage need more info flag. I ask for some state of the virtual machine from there if you go there there is no further context given mm -hmm. okay could be anything like we supply with little something where where the process where the kernel just panics or whatever we just need more information there so the next one, device world tagging is not working for SREV devices. Here, I believe that it should work for disks as well as for SREV devices, but it seems like the information is not passed through properly. And I just assigned that to our device path through specialist, Vladik, who knows all okay. about this. 
could it be? Which... I don't know if I should add a fish more import to it, except it's here. Um, did we define that properly? Yeah, chat app try to try to accept it. He seems to pass the tag, but it doesn't seem to appear on the on the device in the VM, so from that perspective. Okay. Should be good. It looks good from the information you provide, so except it should be good enough. All right, I mean, the input should be good enough, and we can go with accepted. What's the next one? We just look at the ones without label, right? Yeah. OK. I, oh, wait, I forgot to add the, the kind bug here. OK. I'll wait for you to catch up then. So the next one you're on is about um, six three nine seven. You are. Yeah, so we have uh, what Janusz, as far as it goes from his GitHub account, that's it, his name, is talking about is um, that when you start a virtual machine, we virtual launcher starts and it actually forks itself, itself and monitors itself. So, and this is there to ensure that we have a prop exit if. If we, for instance, have a communication bug with libvirt or qm or whatever, and virt launcher crashes, we would uh, we we would lose our outmost process of the shell, and the VM would crash with it. That's not necessarily what we want. We want to monitor the process, potentially restart it, ensure that we at least have, give the process enough time to properly shut down without crashing the VM, and therefore we have a a for a, a fork and monitor uh, model here, but this requires I don't know fifty or sixty me megabyte of RAM in addition for each VM, which is addition and scale. And so the question is leg legitimate to need to memory footprint a little bit. Like we could have a static compiled very small C fork and monitor loop or whatever. So I think we can. Definitely accept it. Yeah, Roman, we were gonna. I was hoping we could talk about this one that uh, tomorrow in the in the scale meeting, because, uh, like you said, like with the, the amount of um, memory per VM, it does add up significantly. And and one of the things is like um, we uh, one of the things we tried here, like the no fork flag, um, was didn't quite like it, it sort of we, we didn't really like find what what it, and the use for it was because we kind of wanted something in between like we don't want we don't want to use the memory but we also don't really like we want to get like we, we're okay with forking as long as like the memory is like tiny um yeah. like we don't like you know essentially that's so we were kind of caught in between like we, like so we one of the things we looked at is trying to find something in the middle but we didn't really know what the no fork was for. So we were kind of, one of the things we were thinking about, okay, could no fork be this tiny, like let's use less memory footprint, let's not do much monitoring, just kind of like give it a little bit extra time and then just exit and yeah, yeah. panic yeah, if it's think, a, but, an issue. It, yeah, we can really look again if we need it at all still. I think so, but we can talk this through. And okay. but at least having a, a very small, binary which is not the whole word launcher which can definitely make sense instead of this one it could be a static c binary or rust or whatever we like i don't know yeah i'm hoping the other guy that commented there the x uh pvark there was also going to be in the discussion because he was looking at this um he's got another issue that he was kind of curious about that's kind of in related to this so maybe we'll have a discussion uh in this area tomorrow or we have everyone okay Cool. Yeah, that's it.
Okay, thank you for that, Ryan. Um, client, go. Okay, here we can write that we just discussed it in the video. Yeah. The horror to use our land. Uh, yeah, I would just write. I will just write here that it's really difficult at the moment to use our client because you have to sort out all kinds of go mode overrides, and that we just discussed it in the community meeting and accepted. I'm almost inclined to give this a kind bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do both, <laughs> enhancement and a bug. <laughs> it's a bug enhancement. Adding the bug <laughs> All right. Seven thirty-five. Uh, I think we're back to last week's. Uh, and I think he I think I am now an org member. Teams. That's what it's looking for. Sorry. There we go. Yep. I am. I'm where I need to be. Uh, this one can be closed. Okay, we're all caught up. And if nobody has anything else, we can close out the meeting and uh, I can return 20 minutes back to everyone. All in favor? Okay, I'm uh, going once. Going twice. All right, that concludes uh, this week's meeting. Thank you everybody for joining us and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks for leading the meeting, Chris. See you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Bye. See you. See you. <laughs>